Hello and welcome to a new episode here on the Mole Under Management channel. My name is KS Mole and today we are starting the Age of Wonders 4 series. Age of Wonders is coming out on the 2nd of May and it could revolutionize the 4X strategy genre. You probably know those games, Civilization, Humankind, Heroes of Might and Magic, well, Age of Wonders, of course, they are all in the same genre. And what I have to admit is over the past few decades, this genre hasn't really taken a lot of steps forward and Age of Wonders 4 is trying to change that. So what we want to do in this video series is to take a look at all those changes which are really groundbreaking in my opinion and which will hopefully move the genre forward. With that said, before we are jumping into this, let me say two things. First things first, I haven't played Age of Wonders 4 yet. I was not one of the blessed content creators here on YouTube or on streaming platforms who could already play Age of Wonders and showcase it. Um, I wasn't capable of doing that. But thankfully, all the videos and live streams are out there. We have also tons of developer blogs where we can draw a lot of information from and even developer streams. So the information to make those videos are definitely there. But I haven't played the game yet, if that is important to you, right? Second, if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and also consider to subscribe to the channel. That would help me out and it might actually bring you a lot of cool videos in the future because I plan on doing more Age of Wonders 4 videos. I also do reviews here on the channel for strategy, management and building games. This is why it's called the Mole Under Management channel, right? That's what the channel is focusing on. So if that is something which interests you, you came to the right place. So don't forget to click on the subscribe button right now and hit the bell icon if you want it. With that said, let's talk about realm creation, AKA map creation. And know what you were thinking, wait, seriously, that's what we are talking about? Like it's such a boring process, isn't it? Like you're opening up a window, you're putting in some numbers, you're moving around some bars, then you hit the button and bam, you have your map and you play on it. So it's not a real big deal. See, that's the thing. You are right on that, but not in Age of Wonders 4 because Age of Wonders 4 is actually trying to break up that formula to add some really cool new affixes slash perks to a map to make it your playthrough, to make it interesting for you. And that's what we're talking about today. So the first thing we have to talk about, like which type of realms you can choose from, and there are three in total, the story realms, the challenge realms, and the custom realms. And basically the story realms, I think that's a little bit self explanatory here, right? It is the story and it will push the story on you. Then we have the challenge realms, which you can see here in the picture right now, where there are already some created maps which are coming with the distinct challenges. Like one of the uh, challenges you can see right here is the silenced realm. It is a dead realm and once a vibrant realm condemned to eternal decay by an unspeakable evil. Though the condemnation is long forgotten, the scars are still as apparent in the land as they are in the eternally restless undead. And this is of course just flavor text. And what is interesting are the perks of the map right underneath the flavor text. So we have scared divide, rampant undeath, curse of the undeath, and no respite. What does this all mean? Well, as I said, those are the affixes slash perks of a map. So scared divide is um, multiple continents, and then there's like a chasm going through it. And you, I think you can only go around it by going underground. Rampant Undead is that you will mostly meet undead enemies on the map as neutral units. And you have to fight the undead. Uh, the same goes with the curse of the undead. Apparently there are then like more enemies, undead enemies spawning. And the really evil part of this map is no respite. Because no respite is taking away the automatic healing of your units when they are not in fight and when, when they are just standing around. You will not get that healing. So you really have to consider that. And those challenge realms are coming in multiple tiers. The higher the tier, the more difficult they are. And of course, if you're saying, oh, 
you know what? I like the whole dead realm thing, but this no respite thing, ah, oh, this is not for me. You can just click on the edit button and you can take that out. So you can still change those challenge realms. But what we want to focus on today are the custom realms. And the custom realms are coming with five types of traits you can choose from. That is geography, climb or slash climate, inhabitant, presence, and miscellaneous, aka misc. And they are super important because they are deciding what your realm will look like when you start the game. So you can basically create your own story, right? I think we have all wanted this for a long time that you started a new playthrough and thought, man, if I could fight back the undead now, that would be like super amazing. Or maybe a demon army or something like that. And most of the games do not allow you that type of fantasy. It's always just random stuff which is, which is changing around, but it doesn't really fulfill the fantasy you want to play and Age of Wonders 4 is trying to change that. And this brings us to the very first realm effects you have to choose from and that is of course geography. And here's an example of this. This is Lava Divide. This realm features primary land divided into two by an ocean of lava and it's two continents and there's a lava river slash ocean in the middle and you can only um, you can only circumvent it by going through the underground area, right? Or you have to find some other ways. But that is not the only thing they have. Uh, another example they had is like uh, multiple islands, and you have some island hopping to do. But the cool thing about it is there are no oceans there, so there is only deserts only sand and the interesting part is that yes you can still move your armies through said sand areas but you cannot build anything there so you can only build on your islands and then you can move your armies through those sand deserts right which is pretty cool and already puts some interesting choices you have to make on your playstyle. now the next thing we have to talk about is the climb aka the climate i don't i don't know why they are not calling it just climate it's it's a bit weird uh you can of course choose not to do anything specific just saying okay give me a world where the climate is like spread out and you have multiple tiles with different climates or you can become specific like the desert realm here and in the desert realm the desert provinces are common Arctic highlands, temperate, desolate, and wetlands provinces are absent, so they don't exist, and the foreign provinces are rare. So that's pretty neat, right? What I really like is the forming realm. You can see that here in the picture. The forming realm is pretty cool. It's random, so you have absolutely no clue what the tiles will be, but they are forming while you play. So the world is being created around you every turn while you are playing that map. That sounds so cool when you think about it, right? It's like, oh, okay, what will be here? Oh, there's nothing there yet. And then two turns, you're coming back later and you realize there's a forest here now, right? It's like a pretty cool thing and I'm, I'm curious to see how that will work out. So the next thing is the inhabitants. So we have already talked about um, the undead, right? Here we can see the uh, megafauna. The beasts of these realms are especially large and ferocious. Animal units are common. Marauder animal units gain empowered beasts. Um, and then they're getting more powerful. Or you can do the peaceful lands where you don't even have like a lot of enemies. I think where you have no enemies whatsoever which brings their own issues to the table because on the one hand you don't have to fight any of the neutral enemies but also 
you don't have any neutral enemies which will give you XP before that or which are stopping the like other factions and their tracks right it, it comes with its own issues and I, I like the idea that you can just say okay I want to make my own decisions on who I want to fight of course as per usual you don't have to specialize on this you can just say give me a healthy mix that also exists the next one is the presence and you might think wait a second isn't inhabitants and presence the same no think about the presence as world events something which is happening in this realm right now which is of great consequences and the example they're giving us here is the pretender kings and the kingdom that once dominated this realm has fallen and three successors lay claim to the throne of this once prosperous kingdom the pretender kings they have three of them which are i think randomly created start with two additional cities each pretender king starts at war with the other pretender kings whoever forms an alliance with or defeats each pretender king is victorious so this basically starts out with a special condition and makes the game super interesting right yes you start out with two more cities you are already starting out with a big realm but you are already at war with two other big factions and even if you are deciding that you don't want to be let's say a pretender king you are just somebody who is coming in there uh, this also makes it really interesting because yes you have three factions being at war which will probably give you ample time to build up your own civilization but at some point you might stand against a unified kingdom and then you might be into trouble so i think this is one of the coolest thing they have here that you can choose if something special is happening in the realm or you say nah i am the special person in this realm i don't want anything special there now let's talk about miscellaneous aka misc i know this is like uh, okay this is probably just small fries at this point and the thing is you are right but also it's not unimportant so we have a few examples here like we have uh, the ruined realms or the small underground and ruined realms is the realm has seen brutal conflict in the past free cities are rare city ruins are common and i think the city ruins you can go into if i still remember that correctly or the small underground is that normally the underground area is as big as the world map and they are changing it to being small and then of course we have like mega cities or you start in an underground right you could also do that or you say unlimited power which gives you unlimited um spells you can weave you don't need uh mana as far as i understand that but mega cities is you cannot absorb or migrate or settle to new cities but cities can form form profit province annexation blah, blah, sorry for that plus five provinces further away so you have now those or as they called it mega cities small things but they can definitely change your play style and then when you have made all those decisions you're putting it together and you are getting your specific realm and as i said that's really cool and will probably change your play styles every time you're creating a new realm and it makes you experiment before you even get to all the interesting part or even more interesting parts like creating your own um your own faction your own hero and that is all coming later and with that said we at the end of the video uh, i think this is a pretty good idea to just change up the formula of 4x games and where they're going and i'm really excited for that so again thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel we will be back with another age of wonders 4 video very soon until then please stay safe